All right guys, so we're driving around one of these bigger flats here. You know, we're looking for fish, and whenever I'm looking at spots with sand, I use a ton of side imaging. There's no one definable piece of structure um, on this flat where they normally sit. So you know, it's a lot of looking for fish with side imaging, right? So you can see, basically right over here on my right side, I have a pod of walleyes, right? I'm gonna scroll in on them just so you guys can see them a little bit better. I'm not getting a real hard white return off these fish, but you can see basically I have a white dash right there and a shadow right behind it. And I'll go ahead and screenshot it here so you guys can see it a little bit better maybe when I upload the video. Um, but that is basically what you're looking at. Typically when you see fish like this, for example, um, you know, they're in an area where it's just sand and a little bit of fringe weeds. It's not really a depth change or anything like that. So it's going to be tough to just drop a waypoint and go back for fish for those fish. So I'm sure if you whip around on them quick, um, spot lock up on them and cast to them, you know, you're going to be near those fish, but they're not going to really hold necessarily right where you're seeing those fish right there, right? So when I see fish like this on side imaging, it tells me a couple things. You know, this is a big flat. One, it's probably gonna be a drifting and casting deal, um, or you know, kind of a trolling or something, some way of moving baits through that area to get a bite. It's not gonna be a jig vertically over the side of the boat kind of spot. It's not gonna be a slip bobber spot. You know, if these fish were sitting on an abrupt rock lip like that, I'm like, okay, those fish are gonna hold right in that spot. But due to the fact where these fish location is, I know that they're probably just gonna keep rotating around the spot. Now, we're gonna talk about settings a little bit here too, obviously. So, you know, my hummingbird settings, and I get asked a ton of questions on this with side imaging. You know, we'll come down here to, uh, um, you know, side imaging sensitivity. I pretty much always leave that at 11. If I'm fishing like a mud bite, or I'm just out in mud or very soft bottom, I might turn that up a couple of clicks, but really I don't mess with that a whole lot. Side imaging enhance. You get a whole bunch of other options here. Contrast is one. I pretty much always leave that at 10. I don't really ever mess with that. Sharpness, I turn that off. And contour mode would basically take and it pinch your graph together and it wouldn't show you the water column on both sides of the side imaging. So that's basically what I'm running with there. You know, the other thing, range wise, I know I've talked about this quite a bit. Basically, I'm always leaving that right around 50 if I'm looking for fish, 50 to maybe 70. Most of the time I'm not cruising through areas which are hundreds of yards big and looking for fish uh, you know, with side aging. Most of the time I kind of already know roughly where fish are on a piece of structure, um, you know, depth wise and stuff like that. So I leave that at about 50 because I get my best readout the shorter and shorter and shorter you go, right? Um, you know, so that's pretty much what I do there. You know, if I'm looking for like a crib or if I'm out in a big flat basin and I'm looking for rock or something like that, I might crank that out to 100 plus. Uh, just so I can see that rock drop away point go over and then see if there's fish in that area But as far as side imaging range is typically what I lead it to you know You always want to obviously be running both sides on your side imaging chart speed I typically try to match that to the speed in which my boat is moving So most of the time I'm when I'm driving around looking for fish I'll set my side imaging or I'll set my chart speed at three miles an hour because that's the speed I'm normally going you know, I'm not trying to side image fish at 10 miles an hour because your readouts are really not that good so uh, three, four, five, somewhere in there, I'd say is a pretty good chart of your chart speed. Um, and yeah, that's basically as simple as that is. You know, another thing to note here is that you probably wouldn't see these fish on sonar, right? You'd have to do so much more zigging and zagging over this flat to mark the same fish. Where if I'm like, okay, you know, fish are in 15, 14 feet of water, right? So I got, you know, I'm in 14 feet when I basically mark these fish, 14, 15 feet. It, and it's plain sand, right? So I would be cruising along all over that sand flat looking for these fish. Where side imaging, I could pretty much make one pass down that depth contour where I think fish are and see them just like that right there. Um, so that's basically, you know, the times I use side imaging. You know, the other time is definitely in weeds. I'll run a lot of side imaging. So like, here's a shot right here. You can see I got a whole bunch of weeds or actually just a small weed cluster off the left side of my boat here. And you can see there's three distinct um, or a couple distinct white dashes with a shadow behind them relating to that weed clump. So, you know, those are also fish where you probably wouldn't mark them on sonar. You probably wouldn't even know that one little weed clump's there. You know, so go over, drop a waypoint on the weed clump, circle around, um, and cast basically jigs or whatever you want back to those fish. Um, so that's kind of a quick rundown on basically how I like to use side imaging. That's my settings. You know, I get a ton of questions asked on this. Um, this is a Hummingbird Helix Gen 2. Uh, this is not my graph. I, I ran the Gen 3s. I am running the Gen 3s and I get my boat back here in a couple days. Um, and they are a little bit crisper. 
Um, but that's basically the settings I run. You know, the biggest things are, is basically once you kind of hone your settings in, to drive in a straight line. Don't do a whole bunch of squiggling, zigging and zagging around. You're gonna get always gonna get your best readout when you're driving in a perfectly straight line when you hit those fish, and they should look something like that too. All right, now sonar and down imaging. You know, I just cruised into this spot here. It's a rock spine. Actually, it's kind of a rock point, but there's just a little bit of rock out of the point of it. And you can see I got some marks here. Now, what are those, right? Or are they even marks? Maybe you're not even sure if those are walleyes or, or if that's even a fish at all, right? So the first thing you want to do is you want to go over to your down imaging. Now, if you run a hummingbird, um, one thing I would highly recommend is setting your hot keys, which are the three buttons on the right side of your graph here. And basically what I would do, I run that first one is sonar. Sonar, if you only have one graph, sonar and split um, GPS, right? So here we have sonar and split GPS. This is the screen we're looking at right here. Now you can see the marks right here. These are the marks in question. Your second key I would have is down imaging. So I'm gonna flip over to that down imaging key and you can see these same marks are right here now, right? So I'm gonna zoom in on that a little bit so you can see them a little bit better. I'll uh, screenshot it too so maybe it comes through a little bit better for you in the video. And uh, you know now we can see there's basically one, two, maybe three, four and five we got potentially five fish right there definitely fish those are typically the size of what i would say eater walleyes are now very rarely do you see an image that looks like that and they're like 25 inch walleyes right because those fish are more one or two marks at a time when you're in when you're in bigger fish right so this is typically what a eater sized walleye school looks like might there be a 25 in there yeah but most of the time these these are, uh, uh, you know, I would say your common 15 to 23, 24 inch fish in this mix right here. So, you know, the, having those hotkeys set like that, and having one at sonar, one at down imaging makes it real quick to just go boom, boom. You know, you see the marks, flip over to them if they're close to bottom and you're like, okay, well, you know, this, this initial sonar picture right here looked like it was only two fish, right? I'll zoom in on that so you can see it here. Uh, Maybe I can't zoom in. I'm not sure why I can't zoom in anymore. But um, you know, then you flip over to down imaging here, and you're like, man, there's actually a bunch of fish right there, right? So those are the kind of things. You know, you see that you flip over your down imaging, you're like, man, that's a good spot. You'd scroll to it like I could here and drop a waypoint. I already have a waypoint on it, so I'm not going to do it again. But you drop, you scroll over here, you drop a waypoint, you hit mark on your hummingbird, you find that waypoint on your graph, you circle back to it, you get upwind, and you pitch back to it. Now, as far as sensitivity and your settings go for your down imaging and your uh, uh, your side imaging, or your down imaging and your sonar, you know, it's basically, it's a little bit different. And you can see if I play around with it here, it has more to do with the bottom hardness. This, this graph was kind of set, actually kind of high for, for what I would recommend doing. But I'd kind of go somewhere in there, 12, 13, somewhere right in there. You know, you can see if you get too bright what's gonna happen. It's all gonna start fading out and you're gonna pick up basically just way too much clutter in the water. So kind of find a ha nice happy medium where you get a pretty dark back screen, but those marks still pop real good. And you can see I'm set here. My sensitivity is set at about 13 right now. So I'd say that's pretty common. You know, I always get questions on if the water is real dirty and stuff like that. I don't see that to really play a, a huge effect. You know, if there's a lot, if you're fishing a river and there's like a lot of turbulence or a lot of just crap coming down the river, you know, then you might have to cut it down a little bit because you're just marking too much stuff here. Um, so yeah, walleyes for sure, right there. Now, sonar, we'll toggle back to that. Actually, is there any more we have to do? Uh, not really, you guys could take a look at this. Your chart speed's gonna stay chart speed the same, just like we talked about on side imaging. Um, yeah, and that's basically that. Uh, not a whole lot going on there. Down imaging enhance, I don't really do much there. I leave my contrast at 10. So, going back to sonar here, you know, now we're back on that sonar. Here's the same fish we just marked. Um, as far as sensitivity goes, we'll go to menu. Got this on my active pane here. Sensitivity. So you can see if I start cranking up, this is at seven or eight, all of a sudden everything is starting to look like a fish, right? And this starts to look like rock. Um, you want to be able to set so you can have a good amount of, uh, um, I'm blanking on the word, they always talk about with flashers. I'm totally blanking on the word right now. Oh well. But anyways, you know, if, if you crank it too high, like the sensitivity on the sonar is up at like 13 right now, um, 
it looks like a rock. It's hard to identify if those are the fish. So I want good separation. Separation was the word. So I want to have good bottom separation on fish that are relating close to bottom like walleyes are most of the time, right? So, you know, once I get start getting down here around six or seven, I would say that looks about right. You know, if you're coming down here and you're like on one, like, yeah, you get a little more bottom separations, but now those start looking like perch to me because they're not marking at all. We have some bug hatches going on and uh, you can see some of it starting to clump up out here. You get it too high and the whole thing gets fuzzy. So I'd say somewhere right around there, you know, seven, eight, right in there is kind of the zone I like to keep mine at. Um, and this is, the, like I said earlier, this is the uh, Helix Gen 2s. Gen 3s are pretty similar overall. Um, otherwise, everything's the same for uh, um, your sonar. So you're gonna have the same uh, chart speed here. Um, your contrast, you can play with contrast a little bit more. Um, you can see once you start getting, dialing that around, it gets kind of weird. So I think they probably come pre-programmed with 20, which is pretty much where I leave mine. This is the color palette I like on mine. Um, it is color palette number five um, on the helixes. I think they've always been the same as far as which color palette is five. I like that one the most. Chart speed, jigging mode off. Um, yeah, so basically sensitivity and contrast are the ones two you played with. Sensitivity, six on your sonar. Contrast is 20 is what I'm running. To be honest with you, um, I didn't like pre-look at these and make sure they were all set to whatever Hummingbird recommended. Um, this is just kind of, I dialed this thing in as far, you know, the last couple weeks here just looking at it. And this is what I run and I have a lot of confidence in what I see doing this. Um, so yeah, that's about it for sonar. Alright guys, so we just got out here, spot lock, right around these fish here. Using a very simple jig and a leech. If you want to see a video on that, we probably just posted one. We haven't aired it yet, but by the time this video comes out, we probably will. Oh my gosh, I just broke a rod in half. How did that happen? Oh my gosh. You guys, oh my gosh, how did that happen on camera? We're gonna fly fish this one in. That was amazing. The line is burning my fingers pretty good. No idea how good that hook set was. That was the first time I've ever broke a rod like that. It's a nice walleye. That is amazing. <laughs> How crazy is that? Well, anyways, you can see the point, I guess. You know, saw those fish, verified what they were on uh, down imaging, came back, spot locked right up wind of them. And right there is a nice, chunky, about 20 inch Northern Wisconsin walleye. Besides the broken rod that went flawlessly I would say on the jig and the leech and there it is learn what you're seeing on sonar and uh, you're gonna be a much better angler